Hey, how's everybody doing today? Today's episode, I wanna go over one of my favorite turtles and one turtle I think is one of the best pets that there is, just period, and that is the Eastern Painted Turtle. So stick around and we're gonna talk about what makes this turtle one of the best there is. All right, so getting into uh, what makes the Eastern Painted Turtle one of the best pet turtles there is. And one of the coolest things about them is that they're part of this group of turtles that are uh, commonly available and they're pretty widely distributed across the North American continent, uh, especially across the US. And the Eastern Painted Turtle ranges from Georgia, where I live, all the way up into Canada, up the Eastern Seaboard. And then as you go north, you also run into the Midland Painted Turtle, which is kind of a Midwest Painted Turtle. As you go west, you get into the Western Painted Turtle, obviously. And then in some pockets of the south, there is the Southern Painted Turtle. So four awesome species of Painted Turtle. Now, what makes the Eastern unique is just its cold tolerance and its ability to range all the way up into Canada, all the way up the East Coast, where you get pretty severe winters. And they can actually freeze solid and thaw out and be completely fine, similar to like a wood frog. One of my favorite things about the Eastern Painted Turtle is that the adult size is not big. Um, they're not a big turtle, they're not a difficult turtle to house. Um, this is a full grown female. This female has nested for me and produced offspring and uh, she's not very big at all. Um, this is probably about a five or six inch turtle. She might get a little bit bigger than this, um, but overall a very easy turtle to house. Um, I know plenty of folks keep them in aquariums with no problem, uh, tubs, stock tanks do great. Um, and I highly recommend if you have a pond, put a painted turtle or two in there and they'll do just fine. Uh, they're not going to eat all your fish, they're not going to eat all your plants. They're, they're pretty right down the middle as far as diet goes. So they're a really good pet turtle if you have a pond. And they're just so attractive. Look at the, um, the beautiful kind of radiating red on the, with the contrast with the yellow. Um, they also have a lot of red pattern on their skin. Um, there's like red stripes on the legs, uh, lots of red stripes even, even on the tail. And they're just, just an overall beautiful turtle and one of my favorites. An easy way to identify the Eastern Painted Turtle from the others is that the scutes are actually arranged in straight rows across the back. Uh, whereas most other Painted Turtles, uh, you know, and most other turtles for that matter, uh, the scutes on the back are kind of alternating. Painted turtles are the only ones where they actually are in straight rows across the back and they're highlighted with this uh, kind of pigment right there. So very interesting, very different. Um, and like I said, just a perfect turtle for housing um, indoors. If, like if you live in an apartment and you have a 55 gallon tank, you can actually keep a painted turtle in there fairly comfortably. I always recommend keeping things outside with as much space as possible, but um, similar to like a musk turtle, these guys do really well and uh, very, very do well in, in groups and social situations with other turtles. I've never had any issues of aggression with painted turtles. These are my baby Eastern painted turtles and these guys are just so tiny. This is the mother, these are the babies and these guys are just like the cutest little guys ever. ever. <laughs> I got a total of five of these this year and um, they really are just like kind of the cutest little, little monkeys. And uh, I'm gonna move these into their own little baby turtle setup and then when they're a little bit bigger, uh, maybe find them some new homes because I'm sure she's not done laying eggs. <laughs> so if you're going to keep painted turtles um, and you're looking, uh, I always recommend captive bred. I recommend captive bred for any turtle. Um, these guys should be readily available on some classifieds. Um, classifieds I recommend is kingsnake.com classifieds, fauna classifieds. Um, I think Facebook used to do that, but I think it's against Facebook's rules now, so I'm not going to tell you to go there. Um, but you may find people rehoming pet turtles. So rehoming and captive bred is always the way to go. If you get a little baby like this, just remember he's going to need a smaller setup and maybe, you know, they're a little goofy when they're young. So maybe don't make the water too deep. I would, for these guys, I would do about four or five inches of water and then plenty of things for them to crawl out on so that they can, bla ba so they can bask and get completely dry kind of see all that those cool colors and cool pattern that she's got just a beautiful beautiful turtle 
again, if you're if you're going to try and purchase these guys, um, they're very very cheap. I mean, you would be looking at maybe 20, 25 bucks for a for a baby painted turtle, and uh, if if you buy it online, you're probably going to have to pay for some shipping. So, roughly 60, 70 bucks, but totally worth it. I mean, if if I if I could, I'd have a ton of these guys. Um, but they're just uh, they're one of the one of those perfect turtles. My buddy Bob lives in Illinois, and he actually breeds and repatriates uh, Midland Painted Turtles in Illinois, and uh, he's done a really good job with those and gets reliably, you know, nests every year and um, raises those up. Now, telling the sex on Painted Turtles is actually pretty easy. It's very similar to other cooters and sliders in that uh, the males are going to have uh, longer nails and a longer tail, and females which this is a female, so she doesn't have long nails and she doesn't have a long tail. Um, and females typically will be a lot more like, a little more domed, a little more rounded, whereas males will be flatter. Um, so that's another way to tell the difference between males and females. And they will breed um, almost year round and mate and lay eggs. As far as laying eggs, they typically are gonna lay uh, in the spring and early summer and in the fall. Uh, the eggs that I got from this girl, um, she had laid in the fall, or laid in summer and hatched in the fall, and then they overwintered in the nest. So that was pretty cool. And that's something that a lot of turtles will do, is the babies will actually overwinter in the nest. <laughs> so basics for housing these guys outdoor. If you do have a pond, you do want to have some kind of visual barrier. As you can see, my pond here has... Um, a I do two by tens, one on top of the other, and it creates a nice tall visual barrier they can't see on the other side, and they're sunk into the ground, so they can't dig under them. Um, you will want something similar to that around the pond if you keep these guys outdoors, because uh, they do get up and kind of roam around. I've seen them actually get up when it rains, and they'll look for worms and bugs and drag them back into the water to eat them, because they are more carnivorous. They're um, Unlike the cooters that eat mainly plants, these guys are... They're gonna chase crayfish. They're gonna eat little aquatic insects. I've seen them eat dragonfly larvae. I've seen them. I've seen this one actually try and catch dragonflies. Um, I've also seen her chase frogs around. So um, they're surprisingly predatory for uh, for the type of turtle they are. They're a little they're little uh, mischievous turtles. All right. So a good captive diet for a painted turtle uh, would be you can give it a tiny little. Uh, live bearing fish uh, like guppies and mosquito fish uh, they'll chase them around and get some not they're not especially good fish catchers but they will eat those uh, ghost shrimp and dried shrimp um, chopped little pieces of meat and tilapia works really well um, and then also any of the pelleted diets are going to do a painted turtle just fine uh, i always recommend uh, missouri and uh, zoomed aquatic if you guys are listening possible sponsor uh, so yeah those those are great diets for them so uh they're really easy to keep uh, as far as feeding and everything. So when they lay eggs, the typical clutch size for a painted turtle is anywhere from about three eggs all the way up to about six. Uh, mine just laid five eggs, and that's about the normal clutch size. Uh, they may, you know, there's leeway on either end, but typically you're looking about three to six eggs uh, for an average eastern painted turtle. The only issues you may face uh, with keeping a painted turtle as a pet is it may depend on uh, what state you live in. Some states may protect them. I don't know any off the top of my head. It's always good to work within what you're legally allowed to keep. So double check with your state laws if you can have painted turtles, and if you can, get one. So anyway, I hope this, uh, I hope this uh, kind of helped you guys out as far as uh, looking for a pet turtle. I know that uh, people ask me all the time, you know, if I know anybody selling turtles and if I have any advice on what's a good pet turtle. So um, I always recommend the painted turtle. One of the best turtles there is. Cold tolerant, hardy. Uh, you just can't go wrong with a painted turtle. So um, thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Please feel free to share these videos on uh, all social media platforms, Facebook, uh, Instagram, you know, all of them. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks again.